Hello there, this is OneUp Indie with another Basics Game Maker Studio tutorial and here we're gonna dive into some blending and what is actually good and for example what you could use and maybe sometimes there are different approaches to that and a little trick question from my side. So if you see those two, three colors then I have to inform you that they don't exist and if you're thinking Wait a minute, what do, we, what do we mean by they don't exist? Well, you will find out later. So stay tuned. This is One Up Indie, and I'm gonna completely skip on my uh, intro. So if you like what you're seeing, consider subscribing, sharing, and so on. So let's see and go into Game Maker Studio because this is, I guess, the most important part. So let's say you want to give um, a flashing animation, something like this, and you want to do that on your sprite. There are two different ways. For example, this one is just with a image, which, uh, I don't know, has like two images. So one is golden and the other one is not. And if you're thinking, okay, this is more work, well, it is, but of course, I like the way this looks. So therefore I had to do this manually because there is a thing for example if you go into uh, color blending then you will this will happen and as you can see the results are not always as great as you think they are because well they can look kind of ugly but of course uh, well it has some advantages so for example this one which is just blinking i'm just swapping between two colors so how can you actually do this well quite easy there is a little variable which is called image blend and normally it is set to see white or well you can delete it because this is the default value and this just means hey no blending for you and what you can do is go over c and as you can see now you're getting you're greeted with kind of uh, a few those colors and there are those predefined colors i don't know light gray let's check it out what it actually looks like Light gray, light gray, come on, come on, come on. As you can see, it looks a little bit well, well, less colorful. This is it. So those colors are the regular ones, so they are predefined, but they, well, as you can see, they are not too many. But of course, for a quick application, like for some blinking, good enough, for example, if you use C red or some other um, blinking animation. And for example, if you're thinking like, hey, I want to have my own color, then you could do that with a hex color which is kind of difficult to get or there's it's a little bit complicated and then you put in the dollar sign if so one way to circumvent that is for example go to this site link in the description below then well, do your colors input your rgb values or your hue saturation uh, luminosity or value here then bam and you can just copy paste it and put it into the game so this was one way but if you're thinking I don't want to use hex values. Well, then I have good news for you. Then for example, you can use make color RGB. So this is a little script where you put in your three colors, so RGB. Then this will return a value, which is, I don't know, the color you picked. So these are one of the things, or if you're using hue, uh, hue saturation and well, luminosity or value or whatever they call it, because there are different standards as it seems, then well, you put in those three numbers. And if you're thinking, okay, so where are they are there? So I'm not sure what, for example, the RGB is or the CMY value or the hue saturation and so on. And well, you can find it in a color picker, I don't know, in GIMP or Paint. Can, they all have this color picker. And then for example, you can go into three values, for example, for RGB or for hue saturation and brightness or value or whatever they call it or C M Y. And if you're thinking, so why do we actually have all those standards? Well, for the, the way, for example, the human brain is actually detecting and uh, telling you, hey, what kind of color you're seeing? It is, uh, it has like three, this is very, very roughly receptors, which um, well, kind of detect wavelength of the light and then they see, okay, is it a short wavelength? Is it a middle one or a long one? That's why the sky is actually bluish. Then you add those colors and well, 
then you get the end color in the end which you want so basically this is the detecting and for example if you have those three colors and you overlap them maybe you've seen that in the school for example we are overlapping let's say uh, red blue and now green and as you can see the result is white and therefore they are called additive colors and for example there is the negative version of that which is cyan magenta and yellow those in quotations not existing colors and for example if you're thinking ah okay so what is the negative version well if you would overlap them you would get black so therefore and there are negative ones and for example if you're thinking okay i want to have let's say a yellowish orange color then for example you would say okay this is somewhere here oh let's go with another color that looks awful uh, so we go yeah, but that's the same <laughs> okay once again let's go for a color which i haven't picked so you want to have that color so therefore you are between red and green so what do we do so basically we check out we have red and green and as you can see uh -huh, we get the yellowish color which is in between so this is pretty neat but let's say you want to have a color which is let's say a total blue and a total red and now you would be expecting okay then it must be uh, somewhere in between it must be green so let's go for a total red and a total blue and the color is magenta <laughs> a color which doesn't exist so here once again the brain cannot identify this number because well, it identified this color and therefore it is making up a color which is making sense for the brain this is how it works and as you can see this doesn't exist and therefore that's why for example magenta is called uh, let's go for magenta so that's why magenta is called a uh, red and blue without the green one so basically you're having two colors without the other one which is kind of not working I'm not gonna go into complete details for that but hopefully now you understand that these colors cannot exist because they are extremes but still the brain is trying to make sense of uh, what it is seeing and therefore you got magenta yellow as well and cyan sounds fancy but basically just uh, imaginary colors so what you're seeing here and uh, once again is the color spectrum what you can see of course there are a few more colors so the rainbow is going a little bit further but I guess uh, some animals or insects could see that, but we can not. So once again, quite quickly, image blending, two ways how you can do that. Well, uh, for once do that uh, with the Game Maker Studio inside the code, then give it uh, the regular predefined value, which is starting with C as a color, C, red, blah, 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 or go with a value which is dollar sign where are you dollar sign and then some number some number and then you get something or just take the rgb value or the hue saturation value and if you're thinking wait a minute hue saturation hue saturations are a different representation of the rgb how you can actually do that so basically this and this are just another way how you can do this and basically this is what color blending is doing it's just another way and yeah and for example if you're just wondering okay so what's up with a c m and y value well it turns out that if you go into the printing business then those colors are more accurate to what you actually want to have being printed on something is um, better with cyan magenta yellow and black ink and then you mix them together to get the color which you actually want and therefore well, if you're in the printing business, you know that this is a standard. And for example, red, green, blue is being used for displays or for all the other stuff. So hopefully that was halfway educational and halfway good that you understand what you can do. And of course, the last way, do it with sprites, which is annoying if you have to do that with lots of things. So just keep in mind, lots of work, not always the best solution to this kind of thing okay so that was it for today have a good one one up indie